Yes, we are live. <laughs> we're live. We're recording. We're in like really solid shape. We're here. Yes. All, All thanks to Jill. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks to the technology playing the game, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today, Tim. And I am so excited for this conversation. I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> me and too. I know we've 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 sort of touched on it um little bit sort of privately and it's it's been sort of building with excitement yes and everything about this with inside out it's so connected to um my soul avatar mm, yes because everything about that is is connecting inwards mm -hmm. in order to go out yes that's right so it's, it's it's in such alignment of course it is right <laughs> this is this is a part of what makes you in particular so special and and myself as well i believe it's that the things that we love to talk about and the and the services that we extend as offerings to those people we care about they're things we've lived you know they're not they're not ideas no, there are plenty of teachers out there who learned about the thing they're teaching yesterday, <laughs> and they're just so excited to talk about it that they call it teaching. And I think that there's something else that needs to happen in order for like the true work to be done. And that that is teachers who have lived the work. So I love that your soul avatar is an expression of that very thing, um, just as will this conversation be for us both. So yeah. thank you. Yes, thank you. And, and please do. I think it's important. It was one thing that has been on my heart and mind in preparing for this, I hope that you're able to, as we're going through the conversation and touching on all these points, I hope you can continue to draw it back to your work with Soul Avatar, because I think this will help to create an even more faceted and dimensioned understanding of what it is that you're ultimately leaning into with that work. And I, I know that many of the people joining us will be familiar with you and your work, but man, continuing to grow those roots into the depth of experience itself and practical application, it's important. So please do that as often as you need to. Shameless plugs all day long. <laughs> okay. And, and I've got to say, you know, the, the, the body keys has given that so much more depth for me as well. Amazing. You know, and, and you know that I'm experimenting and, and when things go so far, we share. Yes. And, right. you know, it's not like it happens today, I tell you tomorrow. There's quite big spaces between. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because I have to live through that. That's right. And, and that's really important, isn't it? The living through thing. It is. I think it's, I think it's the critical point that is so often missed. Mm. I think we resonate to the truth intuitively and immediately. And those of us who have learned to pay attention to that recognize the truth when we see it. Yeah. But there's a difference between gaining access to the knowledge and resonating to that knowledge and saying, yes, I found it and truly understanding it, which is something that can only be accessed through time, through the medium of time, right? And experience. So that's what you're referring to. It's like, yeah, we know it when we see it. And so many of us, I think have, especially at first, like early on in the journey, that initial flush of yes feels like the story yeah <laughs> it isn't it's the beginning it's the invitation to the story it's the yeah. door swinging open to this wilderness of discovery and yeah. uh i think i think it's easy to stand at the door breathless and say ta-da yeah. but take that step into the work that's what we're here to do yeah and it's it's so different to, to learning and teaching from the door Mm -hmm. to actually being through the door that's it and that's it, it's it's unknown through that door that's right i think that's why so many of the best teachers do a lot of this yeah because <laughs> we we don't know we're we're in it like we're in the thick of it so what you end up with is not teacher student so much as collaboration 
It's a mm -hmm. really good place to be. Then everyone's genius gets to grow up, you know, and everyone gets to mature alongside one another. And there's no hierarchy. There's no dynamic of teacher student any longer. No. You know, you and I, maybe we've been wandering around the wilderness. So along the way, we're like, I recognize that tree and here's what it means. Yeah. But for the most part, we're all learning. We are. And, yeah. and you know, I am going to say about the soul avatar again. Good. I have nothing written. There are no guidelines. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about me. It's about the person who sits opposite me. That's right. And they are the blueprint. Mm. They are the creator. I'm just the observer and asking questions. Yes. And a lot of the time, silent. Mm -hmm. That's right. I have a friend like that. He gets curious about me. And remarkably, that's all it takes to just like break through all these layers of awareness and discovery and self-understanding and transformation ultimately, because it's like, there's an, in an innocence to it and an honesty. Yeah. You know? So I, I love it. And there's, there is certainly like a sincerity too. That's obviously something that everyone listening knows about you already. There's a sincere interest. You're not showing up to help, to fix, to solve you're showing up to learn about the other and to celebrate who they are, like really yeah. are deep beneath the surface. Yeah. And, and I was talking to somebody in, live in the group a couple of weeks ago, and we actually touched on the, um, you know, you must niche. And actually him being told that what he chose to put was that's not specific enough mm. and that to me is perfect for the people who would recognize him as the person they want to reach out to mm. and the it's not specific enough to me is that person's own boundaries of, of not being able to see beyond that. Yeah, that's right. I would agree. Especially if the original construction of that was really, really aligned with this, this man's like most authentic expression of heart. Like if this is where he is totally committed, then it must remain that way. Yeah. And it will call in the people who are right. This, by the way, is the most wonderful segue into what we're here to discuss today, huh? Yes, yeah. And I think it's important to say for those who don't know, Tim, is you've had a background in traditional marketing. Mm -hmm. So you really Quite. understand marketing <laughs> in its traditional form. Yeah, that's true. I guess I always forget this part. I just show up so excited to talk about what's <laughs> most alive in me that I forget there's a history and no one knows it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes I, I jokingly have um, wondered if I should just like post multiple variations of my resume on my website. You know, <laughs> it, <laughs> she's like, well, what are we talking about? Oh, my, my experience in this direction. Okay. Um, but yeah, so for anyone listening, uh, I've always been so fascinated in business. It, I, I started working at a young age because needed money. Uh, my family wasn't all that wealthy. And, and I also wanted money to buy cool things for myself. So at 14, oh, I was homeschooled too. So I could do this. At 14, I started working in landscaping. And even at that young age, I was like, first of all, I loved it. And second of all, I wanted, I, I was building my business in my mind. Like, oh, when I have my own landscaping business, you know, so there's always been a playfulness around business building. And then um, in my early, uh, well, late teens, early 20s, I became very interested in uh, virtual businesses. So building online businesses in particular, I was studying search engine optimization, which has obviously evolved dramatically since that time. Um, and so I was building businesses back then that focused on uh, utilizing what is now an antiquated way of applying search engine optimization. So this is kind of these like technical virtual interests. And um, 
then I got stuck in uh, precision machining. I, I worked in the aerospace industry uh, for almost a decade. It was about eight years. And during that time, um, I was always like rising in, in what I was doing. I was, I hated machining, but I was still like the youngest and one of the best in the nation for CNC machining. It was like, I just became very good at it. And so I was always kind of rising in the ranks until I, I was moved out of the machine shop into management. So then I was in sales, multiple different variations of sales, um, negotiating contracts with Boeing and Lockheed Martin and the military and like crazy things like this. Um, SpaceX, if ever, if anyone likes Elon Musk or Tesla, you know, I was, yeah. I, I got to see where he sat in the SpaceX, uh, you know, um, factory, remarkable stuff that you literally needed clearance for. It took me a month to get clearance to the SpaceX facility. Wow. So like, kind of, kind of crazy, you know, Exciting. fairly dramatic history. Right. Um, and after all that, I, I actually moved into process improvement at this uh, aerospace shop in Arizona. And so I was managing a team of 50 machinists and stripping and reevaluating all of their processes from the moment an order was placed to the moment it shipped. So there was this whole process there, which kind of, you know, developing the business and perfecting and refining the business. When I finally left that, which was a crazy maneuver because I was making plenty of money and succeeding, um, I wanted to write. So then I left that work and focused instead on trying to become a writer, which remarkably and unexpectedly kind of led me on this winding path of small business development. I, I lived in Phoenix at the time and I was super excited about any of these kind of small businesses that were growing up, multifunctional event venues, coffee shops, all these different tiny businesses that had, had potential. And so I would help them build websites and, and little um, like marketing strategies. One multifunctional event venue in particular was $400,000 in debt when I started. 90 days later, they had a million and a half on the books. Wow. This was the kind of work that I did effortlessly. It was just pure joy. Oh, and we actually removed what was an enormous marketing expenditure on the part of that business. And I implemented 100% free marketing alternatives. So there are ways to do marketing that are very outside the box and yet remarkably effective. And these were the sort of things that I was playing with all these years ago and have always continued to play with. Um, eventually I did become a writer. I actually built my own business called Draft My Story and it was a copywriting business. Um, it had two ends. One was helping uh, small businesses like many of you to craft their image and to perfect their, um, their presentation. And the other side was actually helping people to write dating profiles because the hardest thing to do for yourself is to write a biography, right? So I get to know yeah. a person and I would write a bio for them. And so I was, I was winning people all these dates. <laughs> <laughs> I was having fun, right? Um, and yet still be, becoming a full-time writer, hacking it in San Francisco, you know, where it's really tough to do this. It still wasn't, it wasn't it for me. You know, I still felt as though, uh, the strategies that I was applying to achieve the end goal that I had aimed for were ultimately unsatisfying. And I could feel that, that the strategies that I had used to gain all of that were also unsustainable, which to me was concerning because <clears throat> though it looked good from the outside, I knew that it was depleting me internally and that, that could not sustain. No. So I closed all that down and, and thus began what has now been, you know, um, I guess six years or so that I've been focused on on alternatives, alternatives that do not deplete our energy, alternatives that are focused on uh, essentially tapping that authentic core within and allowing that infinite well of creativity and motivation and brilliance to um, effortlessly feed our work. So the term for me back then was effortless power. How can I tap effortless power and allow that to feed into not only my profession, but my relationships, right? And my, cre and my creations and all of these different things. So that, believe it or not, actually was the long story short. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important. Yes. It's important to what we're talking about. Yep. Ton, lots of years in marketing. Yeah. yeah. Marketing, advertising, sales, digital marketing, social media marketing, social media strategy. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and actually creating success for other businesses using those strategies. That's right. Correct. But yet it's depleting. Effective, but unsustainable. Yeah. Yeah. So 
there's been there's been this criteria that I've carried with me as a result of this, and and I really appreciate what you just said, Jill, because it reminded me. It's worth stating at the outset because I think we'll keep pointing back to it. No. There's been, there's Sorry, been <laughs> that's okay. I was hoping that it was going to show me any comments. And oh, that's okay. Because Facebook doesn't always show them. If you if you want to take take a second to sort that out, that's totally fine. What you're doing here, Jill, by the way, I've never done. I, I this is for all of my tech experience. I still haven't run a Facebook Live video. So. <laughs> that's all right. I can help you with that, Tim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. collaborators see no one's the teacher or the student we all get to learn well we're we, all students we do have an audience um oh well, there you go is it yannick or janik i'm not quite sure how you say your name and joanna carolyn and karen saying to all right her, two of our favorite internet soul friends <laughs> yes wonderful Thank you everyone for being here with us. And thank you to everyone who will find their way to this video, because yeah. I know that this is one of those things that will continue to serve. Yeah, sorry I interrupted you. <clears throat> Please don't be. Um, this is perfect. We're in, we're in the flow, you know. Um, three criteria. I, I learned actually in developing what at the time was whole system human, which is how you and I met, Jill, Yes. a few years back. Um, whole system human. Uh, the three criteria in business and, and also as like a principal level in my life are this, are these, okay? You have the criteria of practicality, of um, effectiveness and of sustainability. So any idea, any project, any, any um, I, I mean, any spiritual ideal, any um, business idea, it must fulfill these three criteria. So. If it has a practical relevance, a practical value, that's step one. <clears throat> you know, for instance, let's say that you decide that you want to do, uh, you know, 50 sit-ups per day, okay? Yeah. That's going to be practical for some people and impractical for others. Yeah. So if 50 sit-ups a day is practical for you, good, right? You've got that first piece. Effectiveness, <clears throat> 50 sit-ups a day. That is effective if you want to grow abdominal muscles. Mm. It is not effective if you want to grow biceps, right? Yeah. Okay, so is it effective? <clears throat> is it actually going to affect what it is that I'm aiming for? Yes? Yeah. Good. Sustainable. Biggest one. Hardest one, by the way. Almost every business strategy that we see, especially in marketing, is practical and effective. And almost every business strategy that we find, and we'll cut, touch on this you know, over and over again, is unsustainable mm -hmm. because they are almost always rooted in some form of energetic depletion. And by energetic, I am referring to um, how much attention you can offer it. I am referring to financial resources. It's depleting some part of you. So sustainability is a tough one. Honestly, you might be really gung-ho to build those abs right now, but 50 push sit-ups a day is going to sustain for all of two or three days before something happens to get in the way. Yeah. You know, when you're trying to squeeze in 20 before bed and then you just give up, yeah. <laughs> right? So this is how it plays out. Um, thank you for letting me share that, Jill, because to me, those three points, if I could just drill them into everyone's head, that would be really helpful, I think. Those three points contain everything else we're going to look at and they personalize it. That's the beauty of this. I will tell you about things that have and haven't worked for me. And you will find as a result of your own experimentation and your own self-honest uh, exploration of this information, you will find that some of the things that haven't worked for me work brilliantly for you and actually achieve all three criteria. And things that have worked brilliant for me simply don't for you because for one reason or another, they don't fulfill all three criteria. So it looks different for everyone. And, and that's another thing that I just, I love to return to. And I think that's what Jill, you were pointing to with the, the openness of your container. The soul avatar is about creating the space to identify what works for that person yeah. and that person. Yeah. You don't have answers. You have the ability to find them, mm. to help yeah. the other find them. Absolutely. And it, it's, it's not about sending anybody in one direction. That's right. It's about the person finding the direct one that's right for them. That's it. Yep. 
Perfect. Yeah, every time you speak up is like a one-liner. It's a good thing we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. You're you're like a miner. You know how you know how to mine the depths of the other to identify the gold. And um, and so there's an enormous value in that because we struggle to do that for ourselves. Mm. Um <clears throat> Oh, man, there was something else, but it, it's moved. So we'll keep going and, and see if it comes back. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so obviously this is very fertile territory, right? Yes. Um, now, how do we want to move forward from here? Because my thought was, it would be really amazing if as a result of this conversation, we're able to leave after an hour with some ideas, like some, some practical alternatives. Um, I love sharing my stories. And there are ways that many of you listening have developed the ability to extract the gold nuggets from those stories. Um, however, if we're actually paying attention, if you have the ability to see this, the comments and things like this, yeah. uh, for my part anyway, I would certainly invite questions. And Jill, if you have an agenda of your own that you've kind of prepared for this, I want to follow that. But otherwise, this is a conversation. And I'd love to include anyone who wishes to kind of present questions. Um, I'd also love the opportunity to explain what I mean when I refer to inside out marketing. And that's something else that we'll talk about. Okay, apparently the picture's gone fuzzy on Facebook. So hmm. <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that, I'm afraid. Okay, what matters most is the sound. So if yeah. everyone is still able to hear us, we're in good shape. Do we sound fine? Yeah, can check, check one, two. <laughs> If we say if I, if I turn mine up, we'll just get feedback. So yeah. Um, Carolyn said it's all good for her. Okay. So as long as you can hear us, that's fine. And if you've got any questions that you you want to ask, <laughs> you know, uh, on how how to market, you know, what is it that seems like a block because that 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 would be something really good to look at i i'm actually doing um i'm in a program right now um with jennifer urizio on um understanding warrior energy mm. and we pinpointed on monday i'm actually at war with marketing Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> How timely. <laughs> yeah, very timely. So, you know, that's something I want to be at peace with because marketing is just marketing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need to be, I don't need to be at war with it. I agree. Beautiful. What a realization. <laughs> it just needs to be that <laughs> I can be peaceful with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just finding that place of peacefulness within it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what we need to aim for. You know, there's a difference between what works and what works brilliantly right? What works effortlessly. The word that I would apply is actually elegant. The difference between what works and what works elegantly. And the reason I like the word elegant is because it includes both mm. effortlessness and grace yeah. and ground. You think of the dancer who is in complete control of every movement and yet they look like they've relinquished control. Mm. This is elegance. Okay. So the difference between what works and what works elegantly. And here's the thing. The sort of things that sell well to a general public have nothing to do with what works elegantly. They have everything to do with what tends to work. There are generalizations. In human design, the term is homogenization. It's, it's pretending that everyone's the same and delivering a, a one size fits all solution. We're used to these so-called magic pills and they sell. I mean, they sell and they sell and they sell. It doesn't matter if it's a diet. It doesn't matter if it's a, make $10,000 a month in your business marketing strategy. It doesn't matter. In every case, everywhere you turn, if you're seeing a commercial or an advertisement on Facebook or driving down the road, what they're selling you is a generalization, which may or may not work for you, but absolutely guaranteed will never perfectly suit who you are as an individual. Mm. 
So identifying what works elegantly is a matter of reconnecting to what is yours. And that is never a one size fits all. It will never be a one size fits most. It will never be a one size fits two. If it's you, it is, it takes a deep responsibility. Most people will vet themselves right out of access to that thing because they simply don't have the commitment or the dedication to identify what is theirs. And, and by this, I'm referring to a spiritual commitment. That's it. All of a sudden, this isn't about business anymore. <laughs> it's about who you are, period. But that is the center point. That is the hub. It is from that position that everything else blossoms. Yeah, sure. We can, we can, we can fiddle out here on, on the single note of how to make more money. But our life is an infinite collage yeah. of nodes. And, and I often think with that, if it's just based on that single node of money, is that how you value the whole of your being mm-hmm. on that single node? Ouch. Makes for a tiny, tiny self. Mm. Right? It does. But if you can start at the self, all of a sudden every one of those infinite nodes is altered. That's what we're dealing here. That's what my whole system human uh, process was built on. This understanding that if we can identify the critical point of any individual, which is in fact their individuality, then, and we can begin to adapt that, bring it into alignment with what is truly theirs, start to start to uh, slough off every, every, variation of compromise that we've gotten ourselves all twisted up in and truly allow these the individual brilliance to emerge and radiate all of a sudden everything is impacted it is isn't it and yes. i i can see i've got some questions um karen said uh so there's something in life that comes very easily and naturally to her finding other people and connecting people to one another. A few days ago uh, and at other times, someone suggested she could make a business out of it. And her most immediate internal reaction was that this feels like a spiritual gift and I don't feel like charging money for what feels good. Mm. I can, I, I can relate to that. Yeah. I think that is, is one of the most common feelings with a spiritual gift is how can I ask money for you? Mm-hmm. And yet in Reiki, it's part of it that you must charge for it Mm. that it wasn't fully appreciated as a free gift that's actually a really good example reiki right yeah um i would encourage anyone listening to at least consider relinquishing the boundary line between personal, professional, spiritual, and otherwise. All of our gifts are spiritual. Yeah. This is, this is where we tap ultimately the foundation of inside out, anything inside out marketing, inside out decision-making inside out. Okay. Once you're on the level of who you are and you're operating on the level of being not doing right. All of a sudden, the boundaries that we had drawn disappear. They must. There is nothing that you could ever do. Not not a single time you run to the toilet or take a shower or pour a cup of tea or connect friends up. There's nothing that you do that is not a spiritual moment, a spiritual exercise, an expression of your heart, if it's allowed to be. None of us have businesses. This This is really something to grasp. Whatever it is that you are attending to, whatever it is, coffee with a friend, building a business, doesn't matter. It must emerge from the heart of who you are. 
Mm. If you're going to do it right, sustainably, in a way that continues to grow and expand, it must be an extension of yourself. If the work you're doing professionally, the services you're offering are not, it's time to adjust course. Yeah. Or um, to recommit yourself to something that, you know, you've become distracted by. Because here's the thing, many of us come into these activities appropriately and then forget ourselves in them because we're too busy trying to build a business. Karen, if you attempted to make a business of what you do so naturally, I promise you it would fail and deplete you. However, if you continue to do what is most natural for you and take great joy in it, you may find that you never have to charge anyone and still money finds its way to you. Mm. There's the difference. Um, Jill, I can see it. Like whatever needs to be said, I want it to be spoken. Money is just energy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And to, unlike all energy, it's a part of us and wants to have a relationship with it. Yes. So by pushing money away, we're pushing that energy away and saying, I don't want you. This is energy I don't want in my life. And then on the other hand saying, I wish I could travel across and see Tim because it would be such joy. Yeah, right. I get it. Mm -hmm. But I've pushed this energy away that's going to make it possible for me to have joy in meeting Tim. Great, great example. Yes. It's, so it's, 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 it's not about money being anything other than energy. And what are we doing with energy? We're communicating, we're relating. It's a, it's a give and take, an exchange, it's breath. Yeah, we're receiving and giving. It's, That's right. It's a circle. Mm -hmm. if, if, right. if you just give in and not receive in, it's a half a circle, isn't it? It's not complete. That's right. And the reason that, that uh, you know, a heart of gold like Karen's would find this challenging is because of the mentality around money. And, and it's in your words, Karen, the word charging money. You are correct in feeling as though you don't, you shouldn't charge money. You don't need to, that's the hard way. And she, uh, she's actually said, Tim, <laughs> the people that she, she helped sent her wonderful gifts, mm -hmm. a big basket Sweet. of delicacies and an arrangement of flowers. Boom. That's better than money, even, isn't it? That's it. That's the stuff right there. Yeah. It's and it's a pure joy. That yeah. circle. That's it. That's why what Jill's saying is so important because it's not about money at all. It's about the energy. It's about the exchange and we can do better than money, right? Yeah. We have the gift basket. We have friendships. We have opportunities. We have referrals. We have a million different ways to communicate, to relate. It's all energy. Money is one of those things. And that part gets to come as easily as gift baskets. Yeah. We don't have to ask or beg or charge. Not in the same way. When I decided to stop marketing and I built what is currently, you know, the face of my business, <clears throat> yeah. I, I made a commitment, a silent commitment to myself that I would not advertise or market ever again. That was new. <laughs> and and I, I had no model, no reference point to say, if I do this, it will work. I haven't charged or sold since I started moving in this direction. It's been a few years now. <clears throat> and yet the bills get paid every month and there's more. There's room for toys and good food and whatever it is that I choose to engage in. Yeah. This is possible. You know, I told, I think I told you Jill um, before, but this is not the sort of thing that I have ever felt comfortable speaking to until now, because mm -hmm. I needed the time, not days or weeks or months, but years to yeah. live it long enough to say, okay, this concept has proven out. That's what I needed. Proof of concept. That's the missing link so often. But in this case, what, what both Jill and myself are here to tell you is that there's a version 
of life that is prosperous. And Richard Rudd talks about this. I love it. The difference between wealth and prosperity. Yeah, yeah. We've been taught to think in terms of wealth and, and hoarding and, and accumulating. And wealth is heavy. You know, we all want the big number in the bank account, but there's a, there's a healthy way for that number to exist and an unhealthy way. The yeah. unhealthy way is one rooted in fear. It's one that's built on this, this false sense of security. And it's one that can never be sated ever, ever, ever. Mm. This is the same thing that every millionaire I've ever met struggles with. They've got more money, more resources than anyone around them. And they need more and they're terrified and they're unhappy and they're unfulfilled. Mm. Prosperity, on the other hand, is breathing. Mm. I was just this morning reading a piece from Richard Rudd where he talks about nature. He said, nature demonstrates this brilliantly. It gives and it you know, it receives and it gives and receives and it gives in flow with the seasons, you know, the tree bears fruit and then it drops the fruit to the earth. Yeah. We can do the same thing. Yeah. But we can't do the same thing while we're begging and scraping. No, we can't. No. I have a question here and I, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, Janet. Um, what are the ways you found to attract customers that fulfill the three criteria? Oh man, love this question. <laughs> One way only, express yourself totally. Mm. This is it. Now, there's a couple steps here. First, you must find a way to show up as yourself. No, 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 rephrase. First, you must find yourself. <laughs> like you actually have to tap that part of you that is honest and natural and true and effortless and easy and beautiful. And that does take a bit of time because most of us are wrapped up in the expectations that we've built up within on behalf of everyone outside of us. So we tend, the modern human, even the well-intended ones tend to kind of build up this identity that is nothing, that has nothing to do with who they are and everything to do with who they think everyone outside expects them to be. So the first step really is relinquishing all of that, relaxing all of that inner policing, all of that tension to start to identify that cork that we've been holding so, um, you know, so confidently under the surface. And once, once that natural expression of who we are arises and we remember ourselves, which is an ongoing process that probably never ends, right? It's like peeling layers off an onion. But as we remember ourselves and more and more of who we are naturally is allowed to radiate, then we have the opportunity to present that. Now, in my case, you have a website, right? As an example, this website expresses who I am and it's not the first iteration of a website. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many you times have I recrafted it? it? Correct. Well, we I, was, I was changing it to match. Yep. Um, early on, I was building websites to suit a need. And this was outside in. I would look around, I'd identify a niche and I would either identify or, or um, create a need and then I would sell to that need. And this is the way that we've been taught, right? So that was, that was it early and it was totally ineffective. I mean, it worked to a degree, but man, it wasn't, wasn't what I would refer to as effective. It wasn't enough. No. If I were a large corporation, it would have been, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we that's happening all the time you know all the time and we could go into all sorts of conversations in that direction we're not going to get lost the point is it was outside in I identified the need and then I sold to it it wasn't until I realized that what I was really doing was a bit more like a portfolio than a business that I was identifying the truth within me and then presenting it in a way that matched who I was that's when things started to happen and this is the answer to your question my friend if you have tapped, and by the way, if you're on this call and you're asking that question, you've already, you've already tapped that part of yourself, okay? You're already there. If you can allow yourself to be, and then if you can find a way to present that, everyone's going to be different in terms of how they present it. Some people will host meetups and, and experiences, and, and their presentation will be in person. Other people will create a visual presentation. Some people will show up on Facebook, Jill's Facebook group as an example, there are many, many different ways that we can present ourselves, but identifying the way that contains your essence, this is very important. If you can do that, the very fact of your expression having a home like this is a magnet 
That's what it is. That's the answer to the question. We are magnets. You get to design the magnet, <laughs> ensure that it's in alignment with your heart, with what it is that you care to do. <sighs> Off you go to the races, or rather the races come to you. Yeah. This is, it, it is that simple. It, it's true. And I mean, I, I love this group. I love the openness and the community in this group. And I don't pay very much attention to numbers, but occasionally mm -hmm. I, I, I have a look at the stats. And I looked a couple of days ago. And I mean, this is a small group of 78, 79 people. And over the 28 days, 71 people have been active in there. Oh, wow. You know, which is really high. Mm -hmm. you That's know, right. And, and I really value everybody being involved. And, and part mm. of this, and everybody that's with us today. That's it. And I, I have another question as well okay. <laughs> from, from uh, Joanna. She mm -hmm. says she hates the feeling um, techniqued by inauthentic marketing. As an example, uh, as a, sorry, as an empath generator, she feels and responds more fluidly to things that feel heartfelt and personal. There you go. So, and so should everything we create have that same essential value? Yeah. People don't realize that this is what's happening, by the way. People are either going to be manipulated through their fear or desire, which is the primary advertising strategy, or they're going to respond intuitively to the heart of something. Most of the public you know, whatever it is, 80 or 90%, I'm guessing of the population is going to do this unconsciously. They're going to be drawn to a brand or drawn to a story and they won't understand why they're just going to know that they need that thing or they need to work with that person. Mm -hmm. But the reason is magnetic. It's what you've just described, Joanna. Joanna, right? Yeah. Okay. That's the whole ticket. Um, fun example. <clears throat> I have helped my family to develop this business selling ukuleles. Um, so, Jill, you're, you're already aware of this, but yeah. for our listeners, it's a fun little project we call the Uke Bug. And, uh, you know, you can go visit the website and you can get a feel for kind of like the quirky nature of that, of that brand. But it's been quite a learning process because um, my parents, <clears throat> they've really struggled with this same question. How can they get people to show up and buy an ukulele? How can you capture attention? The answer is live the brand. Yeah. They are the brand. So for my parents, there's this genuine, joyful response to ukuleles. It's, it's something that has brought them together as a couple. It's um, playful and silly and bright. Yeah. Now, I promise you that- I love course, it when you play. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, there's plenty of examples of that for our listeners. It's joyful. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's its own process. That We can talk about that sometime. It's every one of those little ditties I play has, like, has to be found. You know, they're all original. Um, but the point is, um, it's been really tough to hold in one hand the truth of how they feel about ukuleles and the question of, yeah, but how do we run a business? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, be in love with ukuleles. Yeah. If you're going to record videos, record videos of you joking around or, or talking about what you're most excited about this particular ukulele, where the wood tones are just, you know, speaking to you or whatever it is, be in love with the ukulele. That is the answer to their question. Yeah. How simple. And Yannick, I'm assuming, um, is, is how we pronounce your name. I'm not, I, not 100% sure because I can't see it, but um, I just want you to hear that this is the answer to your question too. What is it? that has your full and complete wholehearted attention? What is it that inspires you to the point of chills? Mm. I don't care what it is. You know, for me, it was studying human design for a while. 
you know, it's, it's been all the, all sorts of different things for me. It was the ukulele, you know, I, I built the ukulele for my family, the right. website, the branding, everything, you know, that was joyful. Mm. Whatever it is that inspires you, it is that thing that is generating the magnet. Mm. And Joanna, for you as an empathic generator, you actually have a special way of doing this. Any generator, if we're speaking in human design terms, yeah. is the ultimate mechanical expression of a magnet you're built to attract you're built to receive if you can tap that part of you that is authentic sincere and wholeheartedly devoted to any subject again i don't care what it is look at these crazy niches people get into yeah right it doesn't matter what it is if it's yours fully and authentically yours then you will be a magnet that perfectly attracts those people who are exactly interested in that niche now, my family doesn't need to worry about being in competition with other ukulele companies. And here's why. If you've got, you know, 9 billion people in the world, some of them will prefer going to this or that other ukulele shop. Mm -hmm. And the people who are in perfect alignment with the silly, playful nature of the uke bug will find their way to it by some magical means. Sometimes those magical means will be called Google. Sometimes YouTube. Sometimes pure luck. Half the yeah. time they live down the street. I mean, this, we are not in control of how this magic works, but no. it does. That magnet works. Yeah, it does. And do you know, yesterday I, I took my car for a service in MOT and it's a small family run Volvo place. They're not um, under Volvo, but they predominantly, that's what they sell and what they look after Volvo but they're not linked they're not um a franchise in any way and they only have maybe half a dozen cars for sale at a time and i i said to him yesterday i said how are you managing with people not being able to do a test drive mm. and he said even before that happened he said, the people who know us, who have always come to us, they don't even do test drives. Mm -hmm. he said, they point and say, I want that one. Mm -hmm. And that's all they do to sell their cars. They have people that go in and point at the car and say, I want that one. There it is. It's about quality over quantity. And, and that's, you know, thousands of pounds, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and right. I'll have that one point no mm -hmm. need to even try because <laughs> they know them <laughs> mm -hmm. that's right it is about relationship and it is about quality yeah what you said about your group is another perfect example of this I'm I'm a part of many groups I don't interact with hardly any of them but what I have seen through observation is that what is extremely typical, we're dealing in Facebook groups right now, is to have a group that is successful with thousands of um, members, and you'll see the same 20 or 30 people participating. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to be logical about this, if you want to be a statistician, statistic, statistician, <laughs> I want to look at the static, stat, uh, yeah, whatever, I'm losing it here. <laughs> <laughs> Point is, um, from a statistical perspective, the percentage of interaction on Jill's little group is successful by hundreds of percent more than um, any of those other so-called successful groups because it is about the participation. That's why we have these groups. So there's a context that you need to consider in understanding the value of anything. And in this case, extremely high value. It's about the value. It's about the quality. It's about collaboration instead of competition. It's about all of these things. Ah, it's crazy. I mean, we, we're meeting for this call and, and I told you, Jill, that we have an hour and it's true, <clears throat> but it's not nearly enough time. No. I, uh, I feel that if you don't mind, I feel that I want to, at least in the last few minutes, kind of contain what I mean by inside out marketing yeah. so that our listeners um, are clear about this. Cause we've been, we've been all over the place. I know. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> No, don't be. No, it's all over the place in a brilliant and necessary way. Yeah. We've been responding to real questions from real people. I prefer that over an outline. And you filled Joanna with joy. Really? Yeah. Oh, 
Wonderful. Thank you. you. I needed to tell you that. Thank you. Well, I do intend, <clears throat> if not immediately following the call at some point um, today or tomorrow, to go back and visit these comments and respond. So you'll all be, you'll all be heard. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I know you will. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. <sighs> okay. So in a nutshell, what we're dealing with here is a complete reversal of what we've known. <clears throat> Those strategies that focus outside of ourselves and attempt to serve what appears to be a need. Those strategies are unsustainable. Unless you're a corporation with an infinite resource base, yeah. it's unsustainable. And frankly, if we think of the corporation as an entity, I can see from this like eagle eye perspective that that's unsustainable too. And that there is a world that we're moving into where the future business operates much more organically, not as an industrial, industrial mechanized manipulation of fears and desire, but instead as a, a, a connection, a point of connection. The future business is about conversation and relationship. So inside out marketing is identifying who it is that's relating. Forget altogether about who may or may not want to purchase. Forget altogether about the numbers yeah. because the numbers are focused on quantity and they're more often than not misrepresenting the essence of what it is you're after anyway. If you can focus on the essence, tap what is yours, find what is totally, totally your own and live that, just live it. Devote yourself to the joyful expression of whatever it is that brings you to life, forgetting altogether about its business potential. Yeah. I promise you that everything else you want, the money, the opportunities, which by the way, are just other words for fulfillment, right? Because all of this is just a reaching to feel fulfilled. I promise you that you'll access that contented space that you've always been searching for. It is easier than we thought. We've been focused in the wrong direction. We keep trying harder and everything we want is easy and available and ready. So when it comes to business, those strategies that you've applied that exhaust you, frustrate you, disappoint you, you can relinquish them. If you need it, you've got my permission. Forget it. Put it to death. There is another way. We don't yet know what yours is, but we have some ideas. Yeah. And whether, whether you find them for yourself, which by the way, for many of you who are exceptionally capable and have been on this learning journey and are already on that inner path, you're going to find it for yourself. You're going you're gonna to extract the meaning that you most need from this conversation. And whether it's tomorrow or a month from now, boom, it will land and it will be yours. Mm -hmm. But if you need help, you know you've got it. Jill is here. I'm here. Yeah. Right. So, and there's other people in the group here. As absolutely. Well. This group yeah. is filled with people who are living this stuff. It's, it's why I value this particular group so highly. I may not interact much, but just so you know, I'm not showing up on these calls for anyone. Oh, I know that <laughs> it's for you. Yeah. So anyway, I do hope that this helps to encapsulate what is meant by inside out marketing. It's relinquishing anything focused outside yeah. and allowing what is within you to emerge just as totally as you possibly can. If you're focused in a direction that is not wholehearted, just release it. Yeah. You're allowed to. Yeah. Because those wholehearted directions are throbbing beneath the surface, unavoidable, absolutely unavoidable. Your only job is to allow them to be. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. And and you see and Joe. And Yannick has said thank you for answering the question so beautifully. Okay, so that was helpful. I want, I want to make sure that every question has met its like practical match because a lot of this can seem a bit heady and we don't have the time to get into like the specific, um, yeah. I guess, applied potential here, but that is a conversation worth having. And I just want to make sure that everyone who has asked a question feels as though they're leaving yeah. filled with a response. Yes, I hope so too. Please say if, if, if and, and I know you'll come back and, and, and oh yes anything they need happily um, i know as we live into more of this tim we will come back and talk some more good i hope so <laughs> oh yeah. yes i would love that and and i know it's essential that you leave on the dot today so we're going to say goodbye now and i'm going to stop the live stream so thank you oh <laughs> yannick said you want to 
want to do part two. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, we'll get there. I'm Karen. Okay, bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone.